Y'all could join in now with us now. I know y'all know this song.
like for you to pray with me. Our Father, we surrender these feeble minds of ours to you at this time. We pray that you will quiet our spirit so that we can hear what thus saith the Lord. I first ask God that you speak to me. If you don't speak to me, then you can't speak through me. So I surrender my heart and my mind to you. And I pray, God, that nothing in my life will keep your word from flowing. I pray the same on behalf of the hearer, oh God, that nothing in their life will distract them at this time. No bills, no problems, no concerns, no worries, no stress, but just simply rest in you so that we might hear the word, so that your seed will be planted in our hearts. And then, oh God, bear fruit to your glory and to your honor and to the sanctification of your name. That's what I pray in the worthy name of Jesus today. Let it be done. Amen. sermons <laughs> every now and then you run into one of those sermons and and this is one of those sermons where I'm asking that you give me lend God your undivided attention today. I don't want to be rushed, but I want to talk to you. And every now and then I might preach to you, but I need for you to pray with me today. Y'all hearing me? If you hear me, say amen. amen. Okay, okay, all right, let me try it again. I want to talk to you. And every now and then, I might preach to you. <laughs> and I need your undivided attention today. Are you with me? The title of our message today, Take a Deep Breath, Now Breathe. Take a deep breath. Now breathe. I know that some people are elated about the results of the 2016 election on last Tuesday. And then there are others who are downright angry and disappointed. But if you thought and if you think that this was just another election, then you were probably born on a different planet. And if your mailbox address is still on that planet, I would like to invite you to come down to planet Earth with me today. Y'all, y'all ain't, y'all ain't hear me, y'all ain't hear me, y'all ain't hear me. Uh, I, I don't have an ax to grind, and I'm not speaking to any particular political persuasion, but I would be derelict in my duty as the shepherd of this flock and a mouthpiece, feeble mouthpiece for God, to not address 
what just happened. This election was crucial and critical. Uh, on a panel discussion on MSNBC, the comedian D.L. Hughley made a profound statement. He has, he said that America has to come to grips with the results of the election. He said Obama was what we aspire to be and Trump is who we are. Obama is who we aspire to be, those who esteem him as trying to do good. But he said that, that Trump is who we are. He said the reason why Donald Trump won the election is because, or surprised us, is because Americans are hypocritical. He said, you're a hypocrite. The polls said one thing, that Hillary was going to win. But, but the results ended up being different. He said somebody wasn't telling the truth when they asked them some questions. Y'all work with me. If y'all work with me and help me, I'll get through this today. I'll get through this. I'll get through this. There was a Republican National Committee chairman, Michael Steele, who acknowledged, and he's an African-American, and he acknowledged the fact that this, this campaign was dirty. He acknowledged the fact that his candidate uh, said a lot of things that, that should not have been said. He acknowledged that as a black man. I really believe that his back was up against the wall. I, speak, I think he spoke truth. This is, not, this is not a Democrat. This is a Republican who said that his nominee could have done a much better job. But he went on to say that he will not govern the country the same way he ran his campaign. Now let me give you the direct quote of D.L. Hughley, because I thought it was profound and maybe prophetic. That campaign was based on hate by both sides. America saw exactly who it was last night on MSNBC the, right after the election. Exactly who we are. I think Obama is what we aspire to be. And I think Trump is who we are. People said things and, 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 and those polls were so off that meant that people were not being truthful. They said one thing and they did another. And he said the crux of the matter is this. We have to accept who we are in order to evolve. We got to accept who we are in order to evolve. If you think that this was just another election with just a lot of political rhetoric, then you have not accepted who you are. This election polarized and saw the depth of who this country really is. Protestants, uh, Jesus, if you help me, I'll preach this. There are riots going on throughout the country. There are protests going on throughout the country. Uh, I believe the same thing would have happened no matter which side it won. Come on. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There have been riots. There have been disappointment. There have been, there have been disagreements. I, I don't like this. I don't accept this. My, I, my spirit is stirred. And I, I can't sleep tonight. This has never been done in modern American history, politics. Those of you who are of age, you remember a lot of elections. 
And there were some skirmishes in the Democratic, uh, 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 you know, thing that was up in Chicago way back when, when Daly was mayor. Yes. But folk are downright mad, not just at a convention, but throughout the country. The, 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 the National Prevention Suicide Hotline had more calls the day after the election than they have had in 25 years. Now stay with me, church. Not only that national hotline, but local suicide prevention hotlines were ringing off the hook. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to face tomorrow. Now, 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 <laughs> the article said in the wee hours of November 9, when the U.S. presidential race approached its stunning end, this article said that John Draper and those he works with saw a different, surprising result. Different. Surprising result. Then he says that the phone lines at the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline lit up in a way that I've never seen before. Between 1 and 2 a.m. alone, Draper said the national network received 700, almost 700 calls. The volume was two to three times what we had seen and, had, and what it had been. He said it's a trend that's played out in other services too, meaning some folk didn't want to commit suicide, but other folk needed counseling. He said, I can't say that I've ever seen anything like this in my 25 years as a suicide prevention intervener. Oh, okay, okay, okay. See, the world understands that something ain't right. That's my point. That's my point. That's my point. But does the church understand that something ain't right? Oh, and then, then, then the loyal white knights in Pelham, North Carolina. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Pelham, North Carolina. They announced on its website that its parade is going to take place on December the 3rd. And did you see what I said? A parade. On the third, and details of the parade included were, were they, they didn't include the details of the parade. They were not immediately available, and a message left with the group was not immediately returned. But on their website, it says, Trump, Trump's race united my people. Okay, let me repeat it. Atkins. The Ku Klux Klan said that in December they're going to have a rally because they believe that this is a victory for the race. And Trump's race united my people. Oh, I'm going to get deep if you, if you stay with me long enough and can stay asleep, stay awake and without going to sleep. Trump's campaign, I must admit, quickly denied those allegations. No matter how much they tried to deny the allegations, huh? there's a spirit that came out of this election that no matter what you spin on it, what side you're on, it's foul. It's nasty. It's dirty. And it's divisive. And then they even have Counselors, grief counselors, coming to elementary schools the day afterward. Okay, stay with me, church. See, I, 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 I know y'all don't understand this. Y'all don't understand this. They had grief counselors that came to the schools the day after the election to counsel the students on all levels, from kindergarten all the way up to the high school. Now here's what you don't understand because you're an American. But you see, if you are from another country, and if you are a Mexican or if you are from Dominican Republic or if you're somewhere and somebody in your family is not legal, 
and you've heard all of this rhetoric, you didn't understand in the election what you saw was your people being sent back home. I know you don't understand that. Because you're a comfortable American. Come on, come on. See, see, see. See, you all right. And that's why you're saying, what? All of that? See, you, you understand. And that's the problem with the church is that we don't understand people. Because we cool. We comfortable. It don't take all that. Let your neighbors start crying because they say they're going to take my mama, they're going to take my daddy and send them back to Ecuador or South America. Well, if you're insensitive, you're going to say, well, he shouldn't be here in the first place. That's not the heart of God. You're right. Truth be told, we ought not be here this morning in the first place. What's interesting to me is how quickly we as the church, especially the Adventist church, blows this type of radical and extreme behavior to the side as being non-important. And we quickly forget about it a week or two or a month or two from now. We'll forget about it. And if we did that, I believe that many souls would be lost if the church pushed this election to the side. Souls will be lost if you think that this is merely another election. Put this 2016 election up on the historical prominence that it deserves. Morality was not a concern. Pray, pray for me, Rodney. Pray for me, Rodney. Pray for me. Morality was not a concern. Uh, whenever we start dismissing the standard of morality, it is not an issue if we act like that. There's always going to be something bad that's going to happen if morality is not an issue. Help me, Jesus. Please, please, please. 2,000 years ago, a, a, a mob made a decision to kill somebody named Jesus. And morality was not an issue. Uh, what I mean is, is, that, is that his reputation was respectable. His, his character was impeccable. His record was stainless. And his morality uh, was above reproach. But they killed him anyhow. You know why? Because morality wasn't an issue. Pilate went so far to say, I find no fault in this man. And he said, why would you kill him? But they cried out and crucified him all the more. Matthew 27, verse 25 says, 27, verse 25 says, and all the people answered and said, his blood be us, on us and our children. In other words, we don't, we don't care about the result as long as he don't win. We don't care about the result as long as you crucify him. Let his blood be on us and on our children. In other words, I really don't care. I just want to get something done right now. But you don't understand the prophetic significance of it. You don't understand the long-term consequences. Y'all with me, say amen. Just help me. Just help me. All I'm asking you to do is listen to me. I'm not asking you to look at this as a political a Republican or Democrat. Please don't listen to this sermon today as a Republican or as a Democrat. Look at it as a Seventh-day Adventist believer who knows that Jesus is coming soon and something is about to happen. Why could not Pilate do anything about it? Because it was his destiny. 
I don't care what Pilate would have done. He would have still been handed over to be crucified. It was his destiny. Well, on Tuesday night. <laughs> on Tuesday night, the American people cast their vote. They made a decision to elect Donald J. Trump uh, as the next 45th president of the United States of America. And again, morality was not an issue. <laughs> hey, 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 bro, Mike, you hear me over there, bro, Earl? Morality was not an issue. It didn't make a difference what he said. It didn't make a difference what he did what he allegedly have done. It doesn't make a difference. Donald Trump became the president of the United States and you know he could say no wrong. He could do no wrong. But as in the case of Jesus, he was clean. But in the case of Trump, but morality did not matter. Though a man is innocent and don't prove it guilty, I'm only talking about the things that he admitted to. I'm talking about Trump, the things that he said. They were not nice. They were not pleasant. They were not appropriate. But in the minds of this man, you didn't, you didn't hear what I said. But in the minds of the people of America, he will become the next president of the United States. And it doesn't matter about his reality or his morality, I should say. But we made him president. My point this morning is that it would not have mattered what he said. It would not have mattered what Trump did. He could have said more foul stuff, and guess what? You know why? You know why? You, do you know why? He was destined to become the president of these United States of America. Whether you like it or not. You don't understand what I'm saying. You, you, you don't understand what I'm saying, Brother Bridges. What I'm saying is the man was foul. I'm saying the man didn't say some nice stuff. I'm saying the man showed it. He said, I ain't going to say what he said. But the fact of the matter is, is that we still cha him. We still voted him. And some folk were lying in the poll. And they, yeah, they felt one way, but they said another thing. And here's the other thing. No offense to anybody's vote, but I bet you a lot of Seventh-day Adventists. Now, let me say this. Let me put this footnote in here. It's not in my notes, but I'm going to make it a note. How in the world did we get to the point to where out of all of the people in America, we ended up with two questionable characters. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Hear, hear what I'm saying. I thought we were supposed to be a Christian nation. I thought that we got churches all over the land. I thought that we sent missionaries all over the world. I thought that we were the center of this universe, of this world. I thought. I know better people that work at Walmart. Better people, you know what I mean by that. I ain't down to nobody. If you're a Christian nation and you're a praying nation, surely you've got a pool to draw from that's better than what we had to choose from. Oh, but the reason why it's the way it is is because God got a plan. <laughs> you, got, you got something going on. Now, now let, me, let me give you some Bible. Are y'all still with me? I'm only halfway through my sermon now, so you, you know that means I've been 30 minutes already. I got about 30 minutes more. This man was destined to be. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 16, that so Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. This is when Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Daniel said, give me a little time 
and I'll give you an interpretation of what's going on. The church needs a little time to explain what's going on. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, his companions, that they might seek mercy from God of heaven concerning this secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. God's given us some good sense and some prophetic understanding and some insights into revelation so that we don't perish with everybody else. Y'all missed that. You didn't even get that. See, the world don't know what's going on. But God says, I'm giving you an interpretation. I'm giving you an understanding. I'm giving this to you so that you don't perish with everybody else. That ain't all, Daniel said. He said, then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered in verse 20 and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. You know what that means? That means that while things are going the way you think they ought to be going, winter, spring, summer, and fall, winter, spring, every now and then God will say spring, winter, fall, and summer. He changes the seasons. And we've had some good times of late. But God says, I'm about to change the seasons. Oh, that's because you're too comfortable. Oh, that's because you're too happy. Oh, that's because you, I'm about to change some stuff. He removes kings. And raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. Talk to us, Jesus. He knows what is in the darkness. The light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, Daniel said. Oh, God of my father, you have given me wisdom and might. You have now made known to me what we ask you for. For you have made known to us the king's demand. Daniel was given revelation into the mind of God. And I think the church needs to ask God, allow us into your mind so that we know what's going on in these last days. Yahweh has and used a heathen king, Nebuchadnezzar, in order to impact the world and his people. Y'all know what a heathen king is, right? That's a king that might not say everything that needs to be said and might... Might talk about some folk and might get you know, you know. Psalm 75 says, are y'all still with me? Yeah. Psalm 75 says, we give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your wondrous works declare that your name is near. When I choose the proper time, I will judge uprightly. That's God talking now. When the time is right, I'm going to judge uprightly. The earth and all of its inhabitants are dissolved. I set up its pillars firmly. I'm the one that set things up, God says. Salah, he said, I said unto to the boast, do not be, be, deal boastfully. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horn. Now, in the Bible, a horn represents power. You know, on a cow and on a bull and on a rhino, a horn. He said, hey, hey, you boastful people in the Trump camp, don't raise up your horn and don't boast about your winnings. Do not lift up your horn on high. Do not speak with a stiff neck. You know, that, that's like this. Don't, don't speak, you know, don't speak with a stiff neck. For exaltation comes neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and he exalts another. For in the hand of the Lord, there is a cup. No, you missed that. In the hand of the Lord, there is a cup. You didn't get that. In the hands of the Lord, there is a cup. And the wine is red. When the wine gets red, that means that it's ready and it's ripe. You, you know, and if you drink it, you'll get intoxicated. You know. When the wine is red, he said, there is a cup. And one day God is going to pour that cup out in judgment. There's not only a cup on the world, but there's a cup on the church. 
at some point God's going to get tired of how we slight the poor, neglect our duty, don't visit those in prison. Huh? At some point God is going to get when we don't hold the naked. At some point, at some point, get the, you know, there is a cup in his hand. Verse 9, but I will declare forever, the psalmist said, and I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. While all of this is going on, he says, I'm going to still give God praise because I know who is in control. Now, 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 let me talk a little bit about control. Let me talk a little bit about control, ladies and gentlemen. Satan wants you to believe that he rules this world, but he doesn't. God sits high and he looks low. God appoints, but Satan tempts. And when mankind get caught up in their pride and their ego, what happens then is is that they become tempted and then they become to do, even if they're kings, if they're kings, they begin to do things that God does not approve of, but God allows. Not only does Satan visit the chambers of politics, but he also visits churches. He also attends church board meetings and executive committee meetings and constituency meetings and tempts members of the church. God sits people up and he sits people down, but Satan influences and he tempts church leaders, pastors, denominational leaders, and we go astray. We go astray because we don't do things God's way. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, 1433, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace in all the churches of the saints. No, y'all didn't hear that. No, y'all didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. I'm going to say that again. He says God is not the author of confusion. If you got some confusion going on, it ain't of God. Did you hear what I, did you hear, did you hear what I said? You, you cannot agree with somebody. You can disagree with folk and still not have confusion. You know why we're not confused? It's because your yay is yay and your nay is nay. That's why we're not, we're confused when we start getting sneaky and snaky. God says, I'm not the author of confusion. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Unless you, unless you are elevating yourself above the word of God. And I would counsel you not to do that. If there is some confusion and you are part of it. Don't get me started up in here. God says I'm not the author of it. Yes, I set people up. Yes, I sit them down. Yes, I put kings up. Yes, I put church leaders in place. Yes, I put pastors in pulpits. He said, but when you allow yourself to be influenced by the, by, by, by the devil, confusion. Matthew chapter 5 and 37. Y'all still with me? Matthew 5, 37. He said, but let your yes be yes. And your no be no. Listen to this part. We always quote that, but we don't quote the whole text. He says, for whatsoever is more than these is from the evil one. Anything outside of your yes being yes and your no being no, and you being honest and straightforward, he said, it is of the... No, y'all ain't with me. Don't get, don't, don't get, don't, don't back down on me now. Don't back down on me now. So I'm saying porch. God has set us up. And if we're not careful, he can put us down. Your yes ought to be your yes and your nay ought to be your nay. Anything that's involved with confusion. You, you know why you don't have to say amen? Because God's word is true no matter what you think or how you feel. The 
everybody wound up, everybody tight because of the election. Everybody wound up and tight at our constituent community. Everybody wound up and tight about stuffing things. Take a deep breath. And breathe. Because God says, I got you. <laughs> God said, I, I, I'm still in control. I, are you hearing? Are you hearing? But I'm saying, God is saying, I, I, I got this. I, I got this. I got the Trump thing. Uh, I got the any other thing that's going on. God says, I got it. I got it. Satan tries to alter God's plans, but God's plans cannot be altered. Yes, church leaders fail. Yes, they make mistakes. Y'all stay with me. Stay with me. Yes, they make mistakes. God allows things to happen under the watchful eye of his divine sovereign watch care. No, y'all didn't hear what I said. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Why are you over in the corner? Why are you over under the table? Why are you in the closet? God says, I got my eye on you. While political powers scheme and connive, and yes, Ellen White says sometimes demons sit in their meetings to bring suffering on mankind. Oh, help me, Jesus. Can you give me 15 more minutes without going to sleep? Please, please, please. God's watchful eye because he's sovereign. You know what sovereign means? In Matthew 28, he told his disciples, all authority is given unto me. No, you don't know what that means. He didn't say I borrowed it. He did not say I borrowed it. It's mine. And not only is it mine, but in Luke chapter 9 and verse 1, he said that I give it power and authority to my disciples. You didn't hear that. No, 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 no. No, you didn't. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. I got all authority. But you know what all authority means? Within this all authority, I got all of your joy, problems, job, promotion, a, a, a marriage, a, a church problem. Do you know what uh, does anybody know what all authority means? Do you know? And he said, I gave it to you. To you. Okay, okay. Do you know what power and authority? Power and authority. A robber who has a gun has power. You with me? If he got a Colt 45 or, 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 or he got power, stick him up. But a badge and a gun, a badge and a gun, a badge and a gun gives you power and See, if you're wheeling power around the church and you ain't got no authority or badge to implement it, you're out of place. You're going to mess up something. You're bringing a keg of dynamite to a children's party and you're going to blow something up. A robber got power. A policeman got a badge and a gun, power and authority, hopefully to implement proper laws. devil got power. Oh, Y'all ain't with me today. I feel like I'm preaching to myself. But he ain't got no authority. See, see, Elder, every now and then, his power manifests itself in our church in a bad kind of way. You know what I mean? I'm the big cheese. I'm, I'm big Willie. I'm a, that's the power, but you don't have no authority. In other words, has God sent you on your mission? In other words, are you doing what God has called you to do? In other words, are you under the mighty hand of God or are you operating on your own? And what's going to bring America to its knees is that it's operating on its own. We don't have authority to do so. We don't have authority in America to do some of the things that we're doing. Let me, okay, let me, let me, okay.
okay, let me try to make this sense. God sets up leaders. George Bush, senior, took us into the Persian Gulf War, stirred up stuff. Oh, they say it was in the name of oil, right? He stirred up stuff. It doesn't matter whether you're right, left, political, Democrat, uh, Republican. That's not my point. My point is, is that God, God set up people, right? And so he set up George W. Bush Sr., right? You know, uh, uh, after Ronald Reagan. And, and, and then they got, the, they got the Middle East stirred up. And then, then, then little George Bush came out behind him. You know, that's his son. And then he took us against Saddam Hussein uh, into the Iraq war. And they stirred up the Middle East even more. And Obama came along and, and, you know, calmed some things down and did a whole lot of good things. But I cannot leave this sermon without saying there was one thing that he did that wasn't, well, several, but one really not so good thing. God sets him up. God brings him down. And just as much as the two bushes took us into the Middle East and then, and then what's his name, Obama took us into gay marriages. No, 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 stop, stop. You ain't hearing what I'm saying. I love, hey, hey, look, look, I ain't going to even try to justify myself there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Love everybody. All of us need salvation. All of us need love. All of us need to be sanctified. All of us need help. I don't care what the problem is, but the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, you didn't have the authority. Y'all ain't with me. You had the power, but you didn't have the authority to sanction that. Oh, but listen to me, Brother Smith. God allowed it. Because he got a cup in his hand. Y'all, you know, y'all so slow. Y'all in the first grade. I'm trying to get you graduated to the second grade. Yeah, 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 yeah. God allowed it. Because he got a cup in his hand. And unless certain things take place. Okay. Unless certain things take place. You're not going to change your lifestyle. You're, gonna, you're not going to change your coming to church and sitting your whatever down on the seat and going, you know, I ain't trying to hurt nobody, Lord, today. Because I need help myself. But I'm saying if God don't, don't stir the cup. We're going to keep on living like we're living. We're going to keep on doing what we're doing. We're going to keep on not doing what we're not doing. We ain't going to do nothing but get comfortable. Not only is this chair not comfortable enough, we're bringing our pillows to church now. Oh, I'm going to end this sermon. Okay. I promise you I'll try to finish it next week. Okay. I promise you. So God has to stir it. We're doing too well. <laughs> Check is fat. Bank account is secure. Feel pretty good. Looking pretty good. God says, no, I put leaders up. And I sit them down. And they do stuff that you don't understand. And I got a limit on it. Don't get me wrong. I got a limit on it. You know how I know God got a limit on it? Because when they tried to crucify Jesus, the Bible says in the book of John, I think it's chapter 7, right, right, somewhere in the book of John, uh, hey, 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 Pilate said to him, hey, man, you, don't you have something to say for yourself, Jesus? These people are accusing you of this, that, and the other. Say something. Don't you know that I have authority? And power to kill you. Jesus looked at him and said, now wait a minute. <laughs> he didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing until that point. He said to Paul, Pilate, say, say something for yourself. And he said, I got the thought of the kill you. Jesus turned around and said, hold on a minute. <laughs> you don't have nothing unless my father gives it to you from above. Y'all need to read that Bible verse. Because the Bible said, after that, Pilate tried to find a way to let him go. And then the leaders, y'all ain't with me. Y'all ain't with me. The church leaders 
are the ones that turn to Pilate and says, if you let him go, I'm going to tell Caesar. And if I tell Caesar, you are not a friend of his and ought to compromise. Church leaders compromise because they wanted to be Caesar's friend. Where, hey, Roger, help me. Help me, help me. Go to the piano. I'll finish it next week. Ain't no problem. If, if we're still here. I'll, I'll, <laughs> and, if we, and if we end up in the kingdom, I'll let Jesus finish the sermon. Oh, Holy Ghost. How in the world can we continue to live the way we're living, do the things that we do, say the same things that we're saying, act the same way we're acting. When something is going on, this ain't no ordinary election. God has put something in motion. That's going to hasten his soon return. And good or bad policies, good or bad president, good or bad anything, good or bad character, it don't matter. You know why? Because God got a cup in his hand. And let me tell you something here. Let me end on this note. Let me end on this note. I remember in the book of Daniel chapter 4, and I believe it starts at verse 2. Where the Bible says that, that, that King Nebuchadnezzar had a, a dream. And, and when he had a dream, he, he said that in this dream he saw a tree that was tall and, and stretched out. And birds were eating from the tree. And then all of a sudden, the Bible says that, that Nebuchadnezzar in his dream saw a watcher and a holy one coming down with an axe. Oh, you want to repeat? Okay, I'll repeat it. I'll repeat it. A little less excited. He was in a dream and he saw a vision. And there was a tree and that tree represented him. And then he said that I looked up and I saw a watcher. A watcher. You know what a watcher is? I saw a watcher. And a holy one came down and cut the tree down. I don't care what's going on. There's a watcher. There's a holy one that's in the midst of every mess, every miracle, every moment, every mountain, every mud. There's a watcher. I'm so glad Jesus set the record straight with his disciples. Because they saw him die. And then the Bible says that in, in, in Matthew chapter 28, I think it's verse 16, that when, they, when Jesus said, I want you to meet me over there. And when they came over to meet him there, they said, folk who hadn't seen him saw him, but he says some worshipped him and some doubted. Is that you? I know we saw them kill you, but is that you? Yeah. Some worship. Y'all ain't getting it. See, if I, if, I start, if I start that up, we're going to stay here a minute. Some worship and some doubt it. Some folk are worshiping God and saying, hey, Jesus is soon to come. There are others who are looking at this election results and they're doubting. Ah. Yeah, that's another political. Ah. Jesus said, all power is in my hand. I didn't borrow it. I didn't steal it. I earned it. When I got up on Sunday morning, power woke me up. Power met me at the door. Power moved the rock. Power caused me to come out. Power. time to preach it, but I can't. Now, maybe next week I'll finish it. 
He said, and I give that power to you. And authority. Use it. Stop using the power and authority to step out and, and make your voice heard and make yourself known and, and to get your, no, 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 no. Your, your little kingdom here on earth don't mean nothing. Hey, the devil comes and it's like, say, it's like a castle on the sand of the beach. But those who stand on the solid rock, all these storms that are about to come, more wars, more killing, more bombs, more terrorist attacks, more this. It's coming. It's coming. But are you standing on the rock? Hey, hey, church. Hey, church of the living God. Hey, hey. Three. 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 In. Because God said, I got it. problem with us, the problem with us, we get in the way, and we get frantic, my house, my car, my, my mortgage, my, my marriage, my, we get frantic, and God said, hey, 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 all power, but my children, my children, my, my all power, Y'all ain't feeling me. Y'all ain't feeling me. You ain't feeling me. All. I got this. Let me tell you a story. And I'm going to quit for sure. I went into past, I went, went into Elder Thaddeus Jackson's room when I had come back from Cuba. And, and uh, I visited him. And, uh, he had his mask on and stuff hooked up to him in the intensive care unit. And uh, he was alert and his mind was good, but he couldn't hardly talk because of this thing, this big thing. And as it was fogging up and he was trying to talk, I said, I said, Elder, don't, don't say much. Now. I'm just here to be with you and here to pray for you. He gave me a thumbs up. Then he pointed to his mind. He said, my mind is good. Then he pointed to his heart. Heart is good. And he still tried to talk. I said, no, no, no. I, I, I understand sign language. <laughs> that, that, this, a. I don't need no interpreter. And then a brother came in from, I don't know where he was from. He was, a, he was a, you know, but he came in and then he said, uh, he was trying to encourage uh, Brother Thaddeus. And he gave his testimony, right, about how he was on his deathbed one time and how the Lord lifted him. And, 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 I, and I'm standing there and I'm listening to him, Pastor Dave and myself, you know, and, and I'm listening to this guy. And I'm saying, yeah, I hear your testimony and I feel you. I said, but I hope Brother Thaddeus don't look at that as why did he get you off the deathbed and why am I still on the deathbed and, and what? So I'm a little bit nervous, right? I'm alert. So then I got a chance after he gave his testimony, God bless his soul, trying to encourage somebody. And then I turned to Pastor Th Brother Thaddeus and God put in my heart to say this. I said, let's pray. And I said, let me, before we pray, let me tell you what the greatest miracle in the world is. Not getting up out of this bed, not leaving this hospital room, and thank God that God did something for you, my man, my friend, and getting you to God be the glory. I said, but the greatest miracle in the world is the surrender of the heart to the will of God. Y'all didn't hear what I say, Lavelle. You didn't hear what I say. Brother Thaddeus had a bigger miracle when he did that and he did this and he did this and he thumbs up. That's a greater miracle to say, Lord, whatever your will is and whatever you want to do to me, it's all right. That's the miracle. You know why? Because we're hard-headed. You know why? We're hard-hearted. You know why? We're stubborn and stiff-necked. The greatest miracle. It's for your marriage to surrender to God. Your life surrenders to God. That's 
hard to do. Even if it hurts, I surrender to your will. Even if I don't know the direction to go in and it's dark, I surrender to your will. When you tell me to shut up, I'm going to shut up. When you tell me to walk forward, I'm going to walk forward. When you tell me to step back, I'm going to step back. When you tell me to be still, and breathe. Oh, God. I worry about my son who don't go to church no more. It ain't no secret. Then I get anxiety when I envision myself around the throne of God and I'm looking for him. And now I get... I can't breathe. Because they ain't coming to church. They ain't doing what I... And God... God says, breathe. I got him. I got him. church problems. And our Lord and our God Savior and our friend. There's so many things that go on in our lives that people don't know about. And I thank you that you have all authority in your hand. And you distribute it to your people. And you say that whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, it shall be done. Now, God, you know what Satan is trying to do here. You know what Satan is trying to do in the world. And these are only the beginning of sorrow. Oh, my God, help us to breathe. Sometimes we feel like we're suffocating. But help us to breathe. Put a defibrillator on our hearts. Help us to be at peace with your will in this world today. With our church and our direction as the porch. And breathe. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. We exhale all of the toxics, all of the garbage, and we breathe in your Holy Spirit, and we ask you for direction, and then above all things, help us to be able to surrender to your will. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Anybody want to get closer to Jesus today? A lot of stuff going on in today, and if you think that this is another election, You've been born on the wrong planet. Anybody want to get closer to Jesus today? Stand where you are. Let me pray for you. Not routine, not routine, not routine. But you're saying, Lord, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. There's a watcher and a holy one who's among us. And he's got a cup in his hand. And at some point in time, like the book of Revelation says, he's going to pour it out, uh, unmixed, unmixed, unmixed. And you got to be right then. 
because you won't be able to scurry and fix nothing at that point. Anybody here don't know Jesus or you've left Christ, you've drifted from him and you say, Lord, I want to come back, you raise your hand. That's a distinction. You're standing because you want to get closer to Jesus. The other appeal is, Lord, I kind of lost my way. You raise your hand, I've lost my way. Anybody lost my way? You need to come back. Be very sure. Be very sure that your anchor holds and drifts the solid sea. Who is the rock? Who is the rock? This rock is Yes, is the one. This rock is the only one. Be very sure. Yes, Lord, be very sure. God, make sure my. Stop. 